precious to offers in the summer because it's already May. So one of the key things is that we offer a wide range of online courses for both honors and AP courses. We have several courses designed specifically for middle schoolers on a wide range of subjects, right? If they need help with like say reading skills, we have a course called classic novels just for that. Uh, we even have enrichment classes for things like debate, uh, for public speaking. Um, we have things for like study skills and time management, which are all vital th things for students to transition in high school, right? And of course, we also have classes for SAT or ACT if you have like children who are older who are in high school already, okay? And then we also have a couple of unique offerings at HS2. Uh, we have a partnership with UC Riverside where we offer uh, UC approved general education courses, um, which I'll take a look at with you later. But we also have a unique research opportunity through jo George Mason University for students who are interested in data science and astrophysics. So uh, for the UCR content, uh, these are online courses and there are GE credit approved courses, which means that by the time you, if you attend a UC, you already will have credit for certain courses that you wouldn't necessarily need to take as a student. So we have a course on intro to the study of race and ethnicity. So as I mentioned earlier, colleges really love students who understand the importance of diversity. So taking a college level course on this to understand like the impact of a lot of like current issues dealing with you know race, uh, and understanding that at a deeper, more academic level is going to be vital to show them that this is something that is of personal importance to you and also gives you the framework by which to understand everything that's going on around you. So I think it's a really vital class. I think a lot of universities now are moving to make this even a required course for their students. So, you know, taking this early and showing an interest in this early would be a phenomenal way for you to kind of really, really, you know, set the tone that you are the type of student they're looking for. Okay. Now we also have with a, uh, with UCR a course uh, on financial accounting and reporting. So of course this is no brainer for students who are interested in business. But I really think this is going to be very applicable for a lot of students even going into like the STEM fields, like if you're interested in computer science and engineering, because many of those students will probably have entrepreneurial ambitions someday and they wanna be involved in some sort of business type activities. So having this background already and taking a course like this can be really crucial to show that like, you know, you understand the business side of things as well. Okay, so overall, like what would be the benefits of taking these UCR courses over, let's say, taking it at a local community college? Okay, so first of all, these do count as part of your GE requirement courses if you if you end up attending a UC or CSU. And, you know, for the most part, like the vast majority of private universities will also accept these credits. Okay, so there's no guarantee that that would be the case for a local community college class, unfortunately. The other thing, too, is that these are exclusively for HS2 students. So they're for high school students primarily, right? So students don't need to feel in intimidated by being in the same class as like adults or you know regular college students and so hopefully that lack of intimidation and feeling more comfortable being there with students more or less in their age range would be a great way for them to rack up some credits earlier on okay the instructors are also aware that they're teaching in class with high schoolers and so they won't unduly grade them on a different sort of like scale right they won't be expecting you know let's say for example if it's a class that has essays they won't be expecting at the same level as let's say a college student so you know for the most part what we've been seeing is that like students who attend these classes the vast majority of them do get a's and b's as long as they're doing the required work okay and lastly, it's also important to realize that every single college level class you take actually counts as the same as an AP weighted semester when colleges calculate your GPA when you finally apply. Okay. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we also do have a five week internship program with George Mason University, which is really great, not just for students who are interested in astronomy and astrophysics, but also for students who are interested in computer science and data science, right? Because it's going to be a very data centric type of internship, right? So even if you weren't interested at all in astronomy, if you're interested in maybe being an engineer or someone who wants to study physics, right, or computer science, I think this could be a very vital internship to really get you uh, exposure to, um, you know, other types of uses of, of analyzing data, right? And this skill set carries over if you're interested in like maybe doing a, an engineering based research thing down the line, or something more natural sciences like bio or chem, a lot of the skill sets that you learn in this internship, you know, carries over and translates really well for other types of programs. But like I said, if you're if you're actually interested in astronomy and astrophysics, this is phenomenal, right? You get to actually control the telescope in their observatory, 
So, you know, there'll be uh, talks and there'll be parts of this where you're going to be doing things to like look for exoplanets. These are planets outside our solar system. So if you're really into astronomy, this is a great opportunity, right? And you get to meet with and interact with like professors in, you know, like uh, George Mason's astronomy department as well. Okay, so with that, uh, I'd like to open it up for Q&A. Uh, so uh, go ahead, please, and, and type your questions in the Q&A box, all right? So that way I can get to it uh, later on. All right, so the first question here is, if you've already taken an AP Physics C exam, is it still good to take the classes at school next year? Yes, uh, and the reason for this is that, um, the courses are far more important for college act, uh, for applications than the actual AP exam, right? Uh, this is not like England or China, for instance, where the end of year examinations pretty much take the place of the class. Uh, for US colleges, the transcript, the grades are far more important than the AP physics, uh, the AP tests, right? So it's still very important for you to go ahead and take the class, even if you took the physics C test ahead of schedule, right? Um, so, you know, it's it's not a big deal if you submitted it because, you know, your AP scores by the time you apply are all self-reported anyway, okay? Uh, next question, if any of you attended late, um, we typically record these sessions and then have these available as a YouTube video. So go ahead and just check out HS2 Academy's YouTube channel and we will have that there. Okay. Next is how do activities like marching band and orchestra help? Well, if you do it at a very high level, every single one of these top universities do have to have bands and orchestras, right? So, you know, it could potentially be really helpful in, in the sense that like, if you are like, you know, exceptionally good at your instrument to the point where colleges can recruit you, yeah, I think it can make a difference. It could be a huge hook for you. Now, even if you weren't that good to be recruited, it still shows depth of commitment. You know, many of these clubs or the, many of these activities in college will still probably consider walk-ons. Now, you know, you do need to be aware that things like band and orchestra, though, are very, very time consuming. So it's important for you to be able to juggle this with other considerations. OK, now, the other thing, too, if you're not really that exceptional, it's it's also kind of hard because you don't necessarily get as much individual recognition for these things. Right. So, you know, if let's say, for example, you don't really love doing it and you're kind of mediocre at it considering that these are very time consuming activities, it might actually make sense for you to also consider different other activities before you get too invested in it by the time you get into high school, okay? Right, uh, next is, does taking UCR courses add more value than community college courses or the same? Well, they're all college level courses, but one of the things we typically tell students is that, like I said earlier, if it's UCR, it's already AUC, it's guaranteed automatically to transfer to any UC or CSU, right? Whereas at a community college, you have to check whether or not these are transferable courses in the first place, okay? Now, overall, you know, I mean, granted, you know, one of the, the appeals of a community college is that you do have a wider range, but like I said, some of the issues earlier, um, you know, uh, for one, uh, you're going to be in classes with like adults in some cases, right? So for some students, you may not necessarily feel as comfortable taking it. So that's the value of it. Uh, so as far as like the way colleges look at it, sure. I mean, some people might be more impressed that it's a UC level class rather than say a community college, but college credit is college credit. So colleges still have to honor it one way or another. Okay, next is, are there any websites where I can find long-term volunteer opportunities for a high school student? Um, sure, I mean, there's some websites like Volunteer Match, for instance, is a commonly updated one that many of our counselors have used to sort of recommend things to students, but there are also more like more local databases that you can look at. Uh, you know, oftentimes like your city's website will have links to volunteer opportunities. So let's say, for example, if you live in the city of Cupertino, there's oftentimes like things on the city website where you can find local, you know, opportunities, right? Um, you know, of course, HS2's own nonprofit, you know, Compassionate Scholars, there are a lot of current programs that are initiated by our own students as well. And many of those will have positions that other H HS2 students can take advantage of. So yes, there are many different things that you can do to get access to volunteer opportunities locally and online.